Hello, viewers. This is Jaipur Dialogue USA, and I'm Vibhuti Jha, your host, as always. And as I always request with you, please like, subscribe, and support our channel. Give your feedback, and we cherish your feedback, and we learn from it. So today, I wanted to focus specifically on the women vote in American politics, upcoming election November 5, where Mr. Trump and Ms. Kamala Harris, Ms. Mrs. Kamala Harris Emhoff are locked in in a battle royal. How the battle is shaping up, there are a lot of dimensions to that. We are not talking about that today. We are specifically focusing on the women vote in America in this time. And for that, I have great pleasure in welcoming my very dear friend, Kumari Purnimanath. I chose to call her Kumari Purnimanath, not MS Purnimanath. So, Purnimaji, you are welcome to the show. Thank and, you so uh, you know, much for yes, the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it is we have we have to sometimes change the narrative, right? So that's Absolutely. what is important to do that. But I wanted to focus with you on a couple of things. The women vote is critical. The Democratic Party, I give them credit. You are a Republican, I'm a Republican for the purpose of full disclosure here. I tried to talk to a few Democrat women. They were not available to come and talk because they feared the host, you know, Vibhuti Jha, who was kind of a foxy guy. <laughs> but do that as it may, there is a fun part of the life. So, but issues are important. I have been telling Indians, Indian Americans, don't get enamored or smitten by the name Kamala. Go by the policies of Kamala. And this election is about policies, principles, and the strat strategic end which, to which America will eventually head out to. So let's talk about this. You are a woman. So give us a perspective, you know, perspective on abortion. Mr. Trump has made his position very clear. There will be no federal ban. It is a state matter. It has to be a state matter. And Woman has a right, exceptions for incest, uh, rape, or extraordinary situation with mother's health. So these are exceptions. Why are women not okay with that kind of a thing? What kind of woman will say, I have the full right to become to my body? And they, everybody has a right to their body. I have, you have. But one thing is a very interesting biological and natural fact that no woman can get pregnant on her own. She needs men to get pregnant. So the moment it's a joint venture, the choice cannot belong to only one. It's my thought. You can call me a male chauvinist pig for that. But it is also true that without male contribution, a woman cannot get pregnant. So it's not a woman's rights of her body that ought to be an issue. It has to be an issue of social and moral character for abortion. Women have the right to body. I have my right to body. You can do what you want. I can do what I want, but not at the expense of a general rule. So tell us something about the abortion issue and why women are so stuck up on that. And Kamala Harris is going to play this to the gallery, to the hilt. How would you advise Mr. Trump on this issue? Thank you so much, Bhivuti ji. Uh, it's always a pleasure uh, talking to you. Um, you mentioned about policies, how election is about policies, not about uh, getting smitten about a particular name or anything. But we have to understand that, especially, you know, we Hindu people, our Indian people, we're emotional fools. You know, we uh, convert uh, you know, we, we're not looking at a bigger picture at all. We haven't learned They are actually very nice people, you know. Why shouldn't we vote for it? For That's exactly what's happening over here. In, in uh, They are using emotion to get votes. 
Now they're saying that they're saying all the wrong things to get votes. I mean, if you look at from a perspective of what you brought women's issue and abortion, that's the only thing Kamala ran uh, since the day she started. She pissed off and uh, disappointed the men so much. Now the, the Tim Walls has to go and act as if he's the man. And obviously it's not really working very well. Now, when you talk about abortion issue itself, we have to... We have to think of it from my perspective. I, I look at it from a perspective of my understanding of what Hinduism is. Hinduism is based on uh, free will. Also understanding of uh, karma. You do good, the good comes back. You do bad, the bad is going to come back too. Now, good, bad, ugly, this is also an individu individual choice in a way. Now, we can't really tell anybody how to make a decision for themselves what is right for it. But what's happening in America is that in, in uh, the name of women's right, they're actually commercializing the whole idea called abortion. I mean, if somebody has to go through certain things for, for their own um, personal reason, it, so for it, go for it, because that's how free will has been given to us. And it's a birthright. You can make free will. But at the same time, making it as a commercial uh, agenda from a political standpoint and saying that this is empowering women when it's just a responsibility issue, you have to take responsibility. You mentioned about men's contribution to women's pregnancy. Now, it's also a responsibility issue. Now, today, though, with the science advancement, a woman doesn't need a man particularly to be pregnant. You have IVF technologies. You can do fertilization, uh, you know, artificially in labs. And you can be pregnant if if a woman really wants to be a mother in, in, an, in a natural way, and the, I'm not saying this is absolutely natural, but there is technology available at this point of time. The point I'm trying to make over here is that if somebody don't want something, they can take precautionary measures. Now, nobody is talking about that. They're just simply uh, pushing a agenda under the garb of women's right or my body my choice i have to ask you this bibhuti ji when they talked about my body my choice when was my body my choice uh, okay when they actually imposed uh, the vaccination when they uh, violated our own right that we particularly couldn't make any decision for our own body from a healthcare standpoint did they give us the choice? So is it only for particularly for one agenda versus it doesn't uh, it doesn't apply for another political agenda? So uh, women today in America is not asking a full fledged whole questions. They are only fixated on gender. <laughs> you know the how you know the, the sex, sexual identity and whatever what not i mean obviously look at how kamala has marketed herself as an indian name people are you know dhol bajare india mein unke gaon mein kamala harris aayenge you know indian descent she doesn't even care for her indian descent she actually used indian descent to get indian vote she has a chinese name hey jinli or something uh, because she wanted chinese name a chinese vote now she can do whatever she wants to do if that's her right that's her karma and she dece she can deceive people if that's what she chooses to uh, you know accept for her own uh, uh, particular per personal gain but why is it us that other people have to go with the flow and uh, make it okay uh, that if somebody is deceiving, we have to accept it. No, I think everybody has to now play their own choice. I mean, she can do whatever she wants to do, but we also have the right to say that she's wrong and we have to focus on policies. So nobody is focusing on policies. They're lying constantly. But the, uh, the the Democratic Party, they deceive, they lie. Constantly they are saying that, uh, you know, initially too, in 2020, uh, 2016, what did they do, Democrat Party? They lied on Russia collusion constantly. 
They lied on uh, Hunter Biden laptop in 2020. They they literally pushed agenda saying that Trump is a dictator. If he was a dictator, he would have been dictator for four years from 2016 to 2020. If he was a dictator, he wouldn't be prosecuted by the justice system of America. So the lies that they're pushing, uh, media is taking that and they, they played a massive role in order to shape that narrative. And that's how media, uh, they say it's a, it's a unbiased, biased, independent um, pillar of the society. It's not. And they're using that particular uh, pillar to shape narrative in a different direction. And abortion issue was shaped by media too. You remember what Governor Northam, the former Governor Northam of Virginia said, and it, he normalized it. it was, he had no emotion at all. He said it was okay to do, you know, the just uh, uh, he said it was abortion, but it was a murder of a born baby. How do you do it? Yep, you are right. And I totally agree with you because that statement, I myself heard it. So it's not yeah. that we are quoting some newspaper article. I myself heard it. The other part, which is very important, that you use two words, which I liked it. One was the fact that you said about responsibility matter. You know, today women has the right. If she wants to become a mother, she doesn't need a man. She, she can go through the IVF process and so many technology driven opportunities to become a mother. Wonderful. There is an issue, but about responsibility. And I loved it because I believe the same thing that sex has been so badly commoditized, commercialized that we have the pathetic scenario of child sex, child pornography and abuse of children, you know, so People are, you know, that is another thing. That's what I think women must get up to fight for, that you cannot do that. You know, that is an issue on which I would say women must take up the cause, that you cannot abuse our children. You are mother after all. But responsibility part is also very important. And I, my opinion, so correct me if I'm wrong. I'm speaking as an individual that I have a son, I had a daughter, I have a grandchild. The important part here is that a child in our culture is not a divinely ordained thing. It's not a stork delivers a child. We know exactly how a baby is conceived. It's part of a process of family, right? It's a process of family. We all have their, our share of responsibility towards the children. So if a woman chooses to abort for reasons other than incest rape or mother's health conditions very important extraordinary measure extraordinary conditions extraordinary measures are required why would a woman want to abandon her child midway through the process or you are indulging in an unprotected sexual relationship with somebody and you say if i get pregnant i'll terminate it that attitude is not okay in my opinion so therefore it has to go with the with the responsibility and accountability factor because today a woman has enough opportunities knowledge wisdom technology medications available to not get pregnant why Absolutely. wouldn't you why wouldn't you do that? and i think it has to be case by case basis in my opinion i'll tell you why uh, recently i was talking to a pediatrician uh, uh, she and I, we were, you know, exploring some subjects, especially uh, this one. I'll tell you, I don't know if you have seen that WHO and UN has proposed that the little kids actually have the right or they should actually uh, choose sexual partner when they're little kids. And, uh, it, it probably came about a week ago, uh, 10 days ago. It is a tweet that was uh, shared and in quote, I'll share with you later. You can probably put it out there. But uh, it's quite concerning because they are talking about sex and sexual partners at an age that the little kids don't understand what it is. One has to be matured enough to understand what it is. The reason I say is that in America specifically, we have a couple of systems over here. We have foster care system. The foster care system is not perfect. I mean, they probably ha wanted to do this 
in order to make sure that when the family is broken, the children are taken care of, the children are taken uh, into custody without understanding cultural differences too. That I'll come to a little later. But then uh, the, when the kids are taken away and put them in somebody else's house, those households probably are not, uh, you know, uh, right at a certain time. And a lot of uh, cases of rapes that happen. The, the, this particular doctor that I was talking to the other day, the pediatrician, she was mentioning, do you know, uh, you know, I have a patient of 14 year old. She was, she was pregnant. She was raped. Oh, oh, it, 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 so from a perspective of society and societal expectation, should she go through the full pregnancy at 14 in America when she was raped or whatever? But she is going through it. The point I'm trying to say is that in, in America today, we have two different thought processes going on. One is on the right side, who's extreme enough to say that, you know, it, it there has to be nothing. There, there are certain organizations, they don't want absolutely no abortion at all. That's in the right side. On the left side, you see a, a, a the gang that they actually want to do a murder after birth. So we don't have any centrist conversation uh, what uh, what do we do as a society? Can those particular issue be reviewed and viewed uh, case by case basis? In my understanding, you know, hundred years ago, two hundred thousand years ago, you know, eleven maybe fifteen year old, fourteen year old, uh, they 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 had children. That was a norm at that time. But today, if somebody says a fourteen year old, regardless of whatever. Um, the cause of it or the circumstance of it they have to go through this pregnancy to me it feels um, inhuman if I, I have a 14 year old I feel she's still a child so when I was listening to this uh, doctor I felt uncomfortable so I, I, obviously I'm not saying what's right what's wrong to do but I think as a society we must discuss this topic they have normalized sexual partner at the age of eight they're doing uh, vulgar books they're showing uh, you know you know what's happening in schools in yep. public schools in America today mm -hmm. some parents are standing up but they're being jailed because the, uh, the schools the the system is actually pushing uh, sodomy they're pushing uh, homosexuality transgenderism they're do, uh, giving a uh, hormone uh, without the knowledge of the parents Parents. There's so many cases that we're hearing. This is so mind boggling what's happening. To me, it feels like they are actually destroying the next generation of America by design in order to make sure that this, this entire population becomes mentally ill. So the, so the, the WHO, UN, uh, the New World Order and all these globalists can actually control you because you don't have an opportunity to think. You are not rationally thinking. You are not understanding the circumstances uh, from a broader perspective, from a world perspective. You haven't seen any, any issues. So to answer your question, there's no uh, right answer. There's no wrong answer at this point of time. I think it has to be case by case case basis but also uh, we have to understand that as an adult if somebody for whatever reason they're making such a decision without harming anybody or whatever they have the right to do that as well because that's the karma i'm not saying that's right i'm saying that is god given right to a human they can make it somebody can come and murder me today am i going to be able to stop that person and that's his karma he's going to take it with him and 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 whatever happens to him in terms of justice uh laws lawfare will happen but i'm not going to be able to stop him if somebody wants to put a target on me um uh, and and murder me today so the point i'm trying to say is from a hinduism perspective i think we have several uh things that i look at it from a karma perspective from a dharma perspective from a um, deed perspective from a understanding what's free will uh, we cannot take that free will away we are not god ourselves we can't just take it and uh, take that free will from somebody else's uh, you know lives and matters and how it is but there is another issue that i want to bring it to your attention 
the social taboo you know how indian system is like in in our uh, indian culture the, this abortion is such a taboo getting raped is such a taboo sometimes you can't just go and uh, file a case in and the society because people are going to laugh at you now uh, you see this also matters um and if you have you have to go through a different route in order to make whatever decision you have to so uh, but if you look at an islamic society there's there's no issue of uh, reporting a, a rape you know it's allowed their molanas actually in tv live they say it's okay uh, you know if somebody has gone through the puberty uh, it's okay to be you know taken advantage of it so every culture has a uh, um, has a some kind of norm i'm not saying what's right what's wrong what i'm proposing here today we are in a society where it's extreme uh, extreme in all the sides we're not discussing from a centrist perspective so in individually one should have some right but my a uh, frustration is the democrats who still talk about my voting uh, or my body my choice they didn't give me the my vote my body my choice when it came to vaccination so it's it's a lot of issues uh, bundled together we can't it's a complicated issue uh, it's an individual choice it's it's also a societal uh, norm that is being shaped in america and what i am worried about what is being shaped in america also shapes uh, indian future we are very west centric whatever happens here somehow gets implemented automatically in uh, indian society whether it's a transgenderism uh, gay marriages uh you know the, the and the, all these things that we are seeing in terms of education in primary uh schools is going to be automatically implemented in india without even thinking because america is doing it so, <laughs> so there is something going on that is really uh, concerning to me very important point you said that india gets influenced rather easily and i remember uh telling my friends that you know india celebrates and ob or observes um valentine's day more harshly and more <laughs> demonstratively than even america does it here you know you know and 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 as a, one of my ceo friends we came to went to the usa in christmas time just before that and uh, he said we were staying in one of the hotels in bombay in other places and he said oh my god you guys celebrate christmas more than we do <laughs> so <laughs> india is very easy. Is, India is very easily influenced by things America. Well, it, and that's what yeah, is important. Absolutely. That's very it, important. It's, they have started um they have started uh, uh, celebrating Halloween which we yeah. never saw. Never and saw it. the celebrities have made it a big fashion everybody is doing I'm like you know where did that come from? <laughs> Forget about it. We are celebrating Mother's Day and Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> the, whereas the sociological reason and societal reason for doing it in America is quite significant to understand not exactly. relevant for indian context exactly that's what is important but i wanted to come back to you on another topic you know these are issues which i think will drive women vote and i what i hear from indian ladies and other american ladies i talk to gun but that gun issue is gone because both one uh, tampon tim and uh, kamala harris they own gun by their own admission right <laughs> so they are gun owners now so they can't say that you, you know i will take away the gun that you have but i will keep the gun that i want to keep you know that becomes discrimination that matter is done but you brought in the transgenderism gender change of children in california it's a law now that you know your child can be taken away from you if you do not allow them a gender change without your knowledge this is important part so how, do, how do women not i'm i'm agitated about it as a father as a man how dare you take my child's right to be who he or she is as a god given element how are you in in charge of changing that and how do women accept it and this is something which i find it very shocking that mothers are saying oh i'm supporting my daughter's or my son's gender change agenda which is a permanent psychological damage to the child concerned and also 
the the gender change and that's so so very important tell us something about that subject matter that you cannot do that because just as i always say conversion is a sin against god's original intent purnima could have been paula and vibhuti could have been <clears throat> muhammad but we are who we are so yes. changing a religion is a choice definitely no doubt about that but making it as state policy is 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 actually insulting god's original intent and that's a sin in my opinion that's what Absolutely. i argue your thoughts on that how do no, you the, you you know how uh, strongly i feel about conversion i think it's uh, indignifying as a soul uh yeah. if, if somebody you know, you know that subject matter will come back later I, that i use as an example <laughs> but i want your thoughts on <clears throat> the parental control education management that the D democratic party is you know destroying the school system and children in the school it's as bad or as good as madrasa kind of a scenario no you mentioned you said that you are shocked because things are happening how how the mothers actually going along with this agenda without understanding how how are they make, taking pride i'll tell you uh, you know in india hindus constantly voted for uh, parties who actually decimated them and they want to eradicate them that's shocking to me how why would you support somebody some entity some organization some ideology that actually came to finish you i mean we have 70 80% of hindu population who actually are going along with this agenda they voted again and again we saw that so it's not shocking to me i think it's it's how the psychology uh, works the narrative that works and the the words that you put in order to uh, shift that thought process now for instance hollywood if we look at the hollywood celebrities their children are being dressed in uh, the the boys are dressed in girls and walked around for instance i'll tell you even angelina jolie's daughter when she was young uh, shilo she she used to be a tomboy and they everybody thought they are going to just go through the transition process and he's, she will become a he look at her today she's uh, she has turned out to be a beautiful woman and so so now i'll uh, tell you that example because I, the reason i like that example is my daughter when she was little she used to call herself bunny she sometimes i i called her bunny too so can you imagine as a mother i will transform her into a bunny because the little kid says i'm bunny one day she is bunny the next day she is a fox i'll change her based on whatever she says if somebody wants to do go through that process of gender change and they think that they are actually in the wrong body let them be at least a voting age of 18 and to me uh, 18 can you imagine this uh, the college students that go to uh, college at 18 17 year old how much did they see the world to even vote uh, or to understand who to vote for हमारे जमाने में तो कॉलेज से बाहर निकलने के बाद भी हमें समझ नहीं आ रहा था किससे वोट करें कैसे क्यों क्यों वोट करें व्हाट इज द पॉलिसी इज अंडरस्टैंडिंग बट वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड थिंग्स हैव चेंज द कॉलेजेस इवन द स्कूल्स द प्राइमरी एजुकेशन सिस्टम्स आर बीइंग यूज्ड एज अ पॉलिटिकल ग्राउंड टू सेंड मैसेज सो हॉलीवुड द द नेटफ्लिक्स एंड द द आर्ट्स एंड मीडिया जस्ट लाइक बॉलीवुड इज बीइंग यूज्ड टू नॉर्मलाइज सच थिंग्स they are making documentaries they are making media uh, uh, movies out of it to normalize it now for instance i'll give you an example i i, I didn't want to take a name but i will let's say karan johar i have no problem of karan johar or xyz being a homosexual now I, i we were just talking about it this particular issue with somebody yesterday okay karan johar is a homosexual great he can marry whoever he wants to have a home now think about from a perspective of the societal change he actually adopted two children these two children are growing up with two men and one is a mother one is a father acting as it now when they grow up they are going to think it's going to be normal it's okay to have a household a mother and a father with the, the same gender situation how are their mentality being shaped 
and if you look at this particular generation of india america uk xyz or so can you please tell me the islamic community is going to accept it this is the best way to end the progeny this is the best way to depopulization uh, depopulize uh, populize the world they are talking about uh, reducing um, human count so how do you do it this is a perfect way to you know uh, reduce population of the world so they have an agenda so when we talk about how are people mass believing it is because the media and the the entities like uh, hollywood the bollywood the documentaries are being used in order to push those messages so i, I don't think it's by accident by uh, by any chance and so to answer your question you are right i i totally agree with you that you know there is an unholy alliance of the thought agenda and how to push that agenda on the unsuspecting people unfortunately majority of the people depend on information sources and they say you use a very appropriate word they normalize it theek hai ho gaya to ho gaya waisa hai to waisa rehne do so us tarah se jo wo baat hoti hai na so then it begins to you begin to begin to get affected adversely you begin to say okay theek hai usko jaise marzi ho aise jeene do but in reality in the societal way that's not okay but last question of the day that i would ask you is that we covered the abortion issue the gun matter parental control education gender change how are the women satisfied or okay with the such a terrible law and order situation arising on account of illegal immigration that is you are looking at actual videos of illegal immigrants getting into an apartment throwing out the occupant and occupying that place all in the name of freedom or the right uh, shouldn't women be against that part which is fostered nurtured promoted and protected by the democratic party what do you say well it's very quite interesting question uh, it's again coming back to the same thing the the narrative is not freedom the narrative is compassion they think that illegally bringing people in over here and uh, supporting those uh, lot through the treasury system and the uh, taxpayers money is the compassionate thing to do that's why they go to the border that's why the ngos are actually involved in uh, the act that is actually anti national at this point of time they are actually also giving lectures to the countries who are not taking illegal immigrants you saw what uh, poland said in the past you know what india has is been trying to do they are they are being criticized for standing for the national uh, sovereignty so to me it it, it is again uh, the thought process uh, the way they are uh, gaining um, the ground is not because you know they are talking about the freedom or things they are actually saying that those ideology is actually more compassionate than anybody else and in, on our side in specifically in america uh, today they have labeled they have characterized uh, mr trump as a villain mr trump as a mis misogynist mr trump as a sexist mr trump had uh, no idea he's an arrogant little uh, you know he lives in own world so you are better off with a woman uh name kamala that the party didn't even know what the definition of a woman is they put a just uh, <laughs> just in supreme court and <laughs> that 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 person had the audacity say that i didn't know i'm not a biologist i don't know what a woman is then why are you claiming to be the party of a woman to begin with it's not a party of women let's be honest now the, the, in our country today the the political system has become so divisive and it's so extreme at this point of time i don't think republican party has done pretty good job in terms of you know 
countering those narrative we only have you know let's be honest we only have one platform which is twitter facebook and instagram and whatsapp and everything has been taken over by zuckerberg and then you have the telegram the telegram now you saw recently what happened to him yeah, <laughs> yeah. so so uh, and the media system whether it's a wapo uh, new york times and uh, uh, financial times economic times you know forbes everything is left global globalist driven so nobody yeah. pushing the narrative so when we say the the republican party couldn't there is a reason because you have one fox news and then fox news also brings in a lot of uh, you know leftist at times and it so you don't know you don't know where things are going so the media that's what i call the that's what i call the paul ryan effect on fox channel <laughs> and this is, this is fascinating you brought that item because there is one channel infamous or famous for being you know supporting the republican party and right of center the rest of them are all way too left abc yeah. cbs nbc msnbc cnbc pb yeah. all lot of them right <laughs> but for <laughs> obama onwards everybody will say oh fox is evil right but they are all divine yeah that's the narrative part Nine. i wanted to come yeah. to the closure of this entire conversation because we can have we can talk for hours on this but one of the things about the indian community particularly and then the general i want your thoughts on both because you are in wisconsin and you know it's a democratic place so am i in new york indians and non indians women particularly right what percentage do you think the voting will be because of awareness recognizing the truth or understanding the policy or is it will it be only on sentimental basis i coined a word some time ago combining sentimental and emotional as a double dangerous sentimental <laughs> <laughs> no i think it's the latter bibhuti ji uh, okay. politics is uh, that's what i've understood through my um, experience in in this particular field that it's more emotional we can say as much as we want in terms of uh the policies but however i don't think uh people vote based on policies they vote based right. on the image that has been created they pay, right. they vote based on the party in, in specifically in america it's based on party too a very right. seldom you will see somebody is moving from a uh, democrat party to to republican party it's happening recently uh because of this extreme uh uh policies that left oriented uh party has taken but however you won't see it very well which we see that in indian politics and you know, people are constantly moving from bjp to congress the congress to bjp trinamool you know uh but they just they don't they are not standing for a particular ideology they are moving for positions they are moving for uh you know they, they they know they can move the votes they they are going to get a position uh but that's not how it is over here people are voting based on the image that was created the donald trump has been um created as a massive hitler it doesn't matter what he does it doesn't matter what he says literally they say very uh, casually he's speaking like hitler come on like uh, mm-hmm. like so it's so the, the, that's the emotion that has been created and unfortunately if this is how people vote and to me it's more than that and it's the fate of america is the fate of america to be staying as the uh, the most powerful uh, nation of the world or they are going to take a drastic policies like that which is going to disappoint other nations and they're going to create their own uh, uh, bricks like organizations de dollarization is going to continue and uh, you know somewhere along the line america is going to uh, get harmed and people like us are going to get harmed because we couldn't communicate what was right and the people never saw our message now when you brought about indian i have to tell you that 4 years ago you know we started this initiative called hindus and trump and then we have actually never had anything like that that we particularly hindu community supported one particular politician 
But these Hindus and Trump, we pu I pushed it through I Exit, which is the Indian American um, exiting left initiative. Uh, basically, make bringing those left voters, left Democrat voters, to the right side. And once they are in here, but not completely to Trump side because they don't understand uh, Trump. Uh, Trump's policies are good for this country. You then communicate with them what Trump is actually trying to do, how he's trying to secure the border, how he wants to bring jobs over here, how he wants to make sure that you are not governed by the govern, uh, government itself. And, and, and they, when the Democrat Party says uh, they want uh, government to stay away from women's body, I want them to stay away from everybody's body. <laughs> <laughs> Men, women, nice children, nice everybody. <laughs> so and I don't want a definition from them because they are not uh, the they are not the one who's trying to who's going to impact my life. But I think we are lacking uh, from that perspective because you remember, Bhutiji. Uh, a few months ago, a report came uh, by a Savera report or something. It was uh, exactly uh, done by the same dubious organizations, the Islamo-Marxist organization who works with USCIRF and, uh, you know, the, the, the US yeah. governments uh, to, to uh, yeah. prominently defame the Hindu community of America. And today you saw that, that particular report when I saw my name was uh, popped up too. And I'm pretty sure that report was actually sent out to CIA and FBI and they're tracking all every moves of us and trying to figure out you know, who this person is working for and things like that. But unfortunately, this NBC reporter, uh, some Sakshi name with an Indian name again, and she was uh, quite adamantly uh, trying to interview me. And I told her, listen, I'm all happy to do an interview with you, but I'm not going to do a private interview. It has to be public, live. I can offer my channel. You do in your own channel. I don't care how you do it, but as long as it's public, live, and you don't have an opportunity to twist my word. I'll say exactly what I mean, and you write exactly as, as I said, and no twisting of the words and obviously that uh, interview never happened but <laughs> but yeah. but the point i'm trying to say is that in the last four years a hindu community and particularly we have seen some uh, hypocritical agenda of democrat party so hindu community suddenly became very uh, uncomfortable with Demo democrat party i'm not saying everywhere it's the same i'm not saying new york has changed or california changed or boston changed but what i'm saying is the hindu community is starting to understand that there are bigger players who are actually out there to get them whether through caste system well introducing caste system or telling them that they're hindutva you know uh, goons they are actually trying to you know erase islam in india they are trying to uh, you know uh, attack the christians in india that's the narrative they have promoted over here mm -hmm. In the recent report, 20% uh, uh, the, the voting share of Indian American voting share of Democrat Party reduced 20%. And that's a significant amount. But listen, if I was a Dem uh, Republican Party's um, you know, uh, decision maker, I would have told them this is this 20% who actually didn't vote for Democrat Party. This is up for grab. You have Absolutely. an opportunity to, uh, uh, to reach out. Uh, to them to outreach them and tell them please uh, show see uh, what we are about now what did democrat party is doing they're sending cards with peacocks to the indians targeting indian people they're actually uh, ar rahman uh, yeah. 30 minutes of yeah. uh, songs for kamala harris's right. uh, you know campaign and then yeah. they also gave a hindu prayer in dnc we didn't have a Hindu prayer in, in RNC. We don't have a Roman uh, type of uh, person recording for our, uh, you know, Republican Party campaign. Uh, the Republican Party never sent a, a, you know, the, the, the peacock cards written by a 17 year old who never, that doesn't even vote and telling me to vote for Democrat Party. So these people know these Islamo Marxists actually are masters of marketing. And they know how to utilize emotion. And that's exactly the uh, people are going to vote for. They're going to vote based I on... Would, I would just come to a closure of this conversation because you again made a very valid point that the Islamo-Marxist group, they are very good at marketing. They are not good at marketing. <laughs> it's bigger. They understand the strategic process. 
we don't. So I remember 2020 election when Ilhan Omar and Talaib openly called upon the Muslim community to vote for Biden. I had asked this question. What if the Hindu community had given a fatwa <laughs> or adesh, if I may say so, and a command that vote for certain X person, there would have been bavander. There would have been absolutely that Hindus are rabid and you know all these people, Hindutva guys are evil. But we'll end our conversation here today. You brought in a very good point that there is a greater awareness happening. And I want to tell you this, that you know people like us and you and have played a role in it. So pat yourself on the back for awakening the Hindu community that go by policies. And I have said this to people before. Look at the policies who has benefited us most. One single data point, every single anti-Hindu, anti-India, anti-Bharat, anti-UNI, resolutions, efforts, rules, canard, caste files, they're all happening in Democrat run states. So if you are the voter and if you are a Democrat, are you OK with that? That's the question that you need to ask. And that is what will drive you to the policy. Don't be sent emotional about name Kamala. Be realistic about and appreciate a name called Vivek. Appreciate a name called Usha. Appreciate a name called Tulsi, who have taken the risk of taking a stand and becoming a position. So this is what is important for us to know. This is what we have to do. And I think to your point about J Trump's image of being a Hitler and he's a nasty guy and a bad guy. I think J.D. Vance, his vice presidential nominee candidate, gave a very good answer in the debate that happened when he was asked that you have criticized him in the past. You have debunked his economic policies. You have done this to him, yet you are his uh, you, now you are supporting him as a vice presidential candidate. And he said something remarkable. He said, yes, I was also misled, mistaken by your media uh, uh, you know, outcry against him. When I met him, came to know of him, I realized that he's so remarkably normal. So the point is that is a great tribute. And this is tribute to Trump too, that he chose a candidate who criticized him in the past, but he chose him because he was worthy of a presidential material. So ladies and gentlemen, when you go to vote on November 5, if you're participating in early election, think before you exercise your franchise. This country is on a literal cross path, whether it will be the policies that made America great to which you and I came to, or you want America to become a socialist, fascist, you know, Marxist, Islamist society driven by those rules. It is a critical decision and it's not light matter. Is a very serious issue. So Punimaji, thank you for joining today. It was great to talk with you. I hope, as I always say, wisdom prevails, truth will triumph. Satya Meva Jayate, and thank you very much for joining me. Thank today. you so much. Thank you.